All right, taking a look at Crypto Rising now, where every week we take a deeper dive into the current crypto landscape, looking into the opportunities and challenges ahead. Now, according to data from BitInfo Charts, last week saw Ethereum gas fee hitting the lowest level since August 2021. But what triggered the fall and what does it mean for investors? Joining us is Annabelle Huang, Managing Partner of Amber Group. Great to have you with us, Annabelle. It's great to be here as well. So Annabelle, there are many possible reasons why gas fees are so low. The tumble in crypto markets triggered by the conflict in Ukraine, inflation concerns, waning interest in NFTs or increased competition in the field with the rise of alternative platforms offering the same service at lower costs. What are your thoughts? So at the time that we're speaking right now, the Ethereum gas fee has dropped down to around 50 guay. Uh, or less than $2 in terms of transaction fees for the very simple transactions uh, level with, that we haven't seen in a long time. Uh, I, I do agree that it's a result of uh, essentially the market downturn um, triggered by a lot of macro factors such as the geopolitical conflict and a lot of the macro actions by the Fed. As a result, uh, the on-chain activities has died down quite a bit. Uh, in terms of DeFi actions, we can see from the total value locked uh, and the transaction volumes on different DEXs, as well as in NFTs, uh, we're seeing uh, around, across the board 30 to 40% decrease in all the on-chain activities, which resulted in the low gas fee. Now, you might expect a fall in gas fees to tempt traders back into making transactions that are seen as gas heavy, like buying an NFT on OpenSea or trading on Uniswap. So are we seeing an increase in the number of daily users on the Ethereum network? And if not, why not? I don't think we are seeing that because, um, in fact, I think gas fee is a function of the supply demand for block space on chain, which is a function of the user demand for different activities on chain. Because of the price correction, I think there has been a lot less activity happening. People have less demand to trade, to buy things, uh, either DeFi tokens or NFTs, which is the reason why gas fees has dropped. Uh, now, with gas fee at an all-time low, some of the users might start to do a few of the transactions that have been waiting, uh, given the cost is lower, but I would say the broader market uh, demand has decreased quite a bit. So uh, unfortunately, I don't think uh, the low gas fee will actually drive uh, more active user at this stage. I think it will still be broader market driven. Ethereum co-founder Vitalik Buterin recently said that the long-awaited Ethereum merge, which will see the blockchain moving to a proof-of-stake model, might happen in August, but there could be a delay. Now, there's been a lot of debate about what impact the merge will have on gas fees, if any. What are your thoughts on whether the current low fees could delay that plan and how might fees actually differ once it does happen? All of us were not strangers to delays in a lot of these timelines, but I am very hopeful um, that E2 of the merge will happen. But bear in mind, that's just the first that's the initial stage uh, for the Ethereum to move from proof of work to proof of stake. And the changes are happening at the consensus level, changing the consensus mechanism. Um, and the immediate effect on gas fees, uh, I would say is not apparent yet. It's not guaranteed that we'll significantly lower the gas fee already as the merge happens. But the road uh, or the vision, the roadmap that Ethereum has is eventually as we implement further changes like proto dank sharding or eventually dank sharding that it will make the chain a lot more scalable and therefore a lot more affordable to use for users. Thanks Annabelle for explaining all of that to us today.